this video, we're going to continue on with our budget and now introduce formulas to calculate values within, within our budget, within our small spreadsheet. And this is where the real power of Excel comes in. Not only can you enter, uh, in, enter text and numbers, but you can also enter formulas. And these formulas will do um, a lot of calculations for you and it recalculates over and over. So it's a, it's a great time saver. It's a great way to calculate information. And it's something that, that uh, is very important to know. So let's, let's look at this now in our, in our budget. So you can see there are some cells that are empty. All of the totals for January, February, March, April, the totals for the food, bus pass, entertainment, rent and books, and the monthly averages as well, as well as a grand total that would go here. So we need to calculate those. So to do this, the, the next step is to enter formulas. Now, um, the way you signify a formula in Excel is to first enter, sorry, an equal sign. Equals indicates to Excel that the next thing that follows is going to be uh, a formula. Now, there are various ways to do it. And I'll show you the very manual way of doing it, but it demonstrates some things as well. So we could say, okay, the total is equal to, and I'm going to click on this cell, B3. Notice how it fills it in below. And then I will enter, this time I will enter the plus sign, plus E4, plus E5, plus E6, and then finally plus. Now I could click on that next cell or I could also enter it, B7. I could enter it myself. Now, in that case, you can see the formula is to add up each of the things, those, those five cells above it. If I press the uh, enter key, it will calculate to be $875. And, and uh, that's good. However, you can see that where that would be very manual. If I had 100 rows, that would get very monotonous and, and probably, probably be error prone. So that's not a good way to do it when there are other options. There are times when you need to make specific cell references. There are certain formulas where that is necessary, but in this case, there's a much faster way to do it. And so I'm just going to blank out that, that cell reference, okay? And now this time, what we're going to use, what we're going to do is we're gonna go up to our tab here and notice there's one that, that indicates formulas. I just have to, sorry, I just have to get out of that. Um, and you can see that there's all kinds of formulas and there are so many well beyond the scope of this uh, video, but there are a number in this one called auto sum, which we're going to, these are commonly used ones that are used in spreadsheets along these lines. If we click on the down arrow, we can see that there is sum, which is shown in sort of the, the title icon there, sum, average, count the numbers, max and min. Okay, those are the ones that are readily available under this little subcategory. We're going to indicate the sum. Now, notice that Excel is smart enough to know, hey, there are five numbers right above where I am. Um, let's assume that that is going to be what you want to sum up. And in fact, it is. It's a very good assumption. Now, this demonstrates something which is, which is another key concept. B3 colon B7 is what is called a range. And Excel has automatically defined the range. But anytime you want to say a range of cells, you indicate the uh, one that is at the top and the one that is at the bottom. Uh, if there's more than one column, it's the top left to the bottom right. Okay, so all we have to do is press enter, and there it is. We, we, we have $875 as the sum. And if you do the math, that's exactly what it is. Now, here we could do the same thing. We could click on the sum and so on. But again, as we, 
as we previously learned, we can we can copy across cells, and and when you copy, it will it will copy whatever is in the cell, and whatever is in the cell is the formula. It won't. It's not going to copy eight hundred seventy five dollars. It's going to It's going to uh, copy across the formula, and it will be smart enough to change it to um, column C because it knows that it's in the next column. Excel knows that. So we'll copy that across. It's $680. And if you look here, it's C3 to C C7. So that's, that's very good. And we'll keep doing that. And there you go. There is, there is all of the four totals for January, February, March, and April. Um, as we did last time, let's, let's bold those just to, uh, again, that's under the home. We'll make those bold, so that's good. Now, you can also sum across as well. So again, we want to uh, have the sum of for food for January, February, March, and April. So now we're summing the other way. Well, let's go back to formula. We'll click on, now we can, we don't have to drop down because, because the, the, the sum, because sum is such a commonly used formula, it's just readily available right there. All you have to do is click on that icon Again, Excel understands which four you want you want to to sum. Press Enter, and we can bring those down. So there are all our um, sums, all our totals for each of those four. Now again, we can uh, make those bold, and and there we go. Now. Something interesting has happened here, or maybe you know it might be distressing, which is there's a bunch of hashtags in that one cell. So what's going on there? Well, that's let's look in there and say, well, no, it looks okay. The the formula looks all right. It's trying to sum from B6 to E6, which is exactly what we want. Why is it failing here here? Well, the reason is because the number that's going in there is too large. For the width of the of the uh, of the column, so as we saw in a previous video, it's easy to fix. You just give it a little bit more space, and there it is. Uh, you can adjust that to whatever you think is reasonable. Okay, now it's reasonable that we should have a total, a grand total, of all the totals. So if we again drag this over. We can see our grand total for all of our months uh, for, for all of our expenses is $2,885. So let's make that, it's already bold, but let's make it red just to have it stand out a, a little bit more. Now, last but not least is this average. So we have now uh, another formula, it's not a sum formula, but it's an average. We want to find out the monthly average costs. So let's again go to our formulas. We I remember seeing that under here. So we found it here and there's average. Now in this case, Excel makes a mistake. It's not, it doesn't always guess right in terms of what you're trying to find the averages of. Really what we want is the average of January, February, March, and April. We don't want to include the total in that average. That'll, that'll um, make it too high. That 410 is sort of double counting everything else. So what we want and what we can do is override this. We don't have to take this. We don't have to, to use it. We can now just indicate the range on our own. So we'll go like this. And now you can see the range is correctly B3 to E3. Okay, we press enter. And there is the monthly average of our food. You can see that that makes that should make sense based on that. Again, we can copy that formula down and find out all of our monthly averages of each of our of each of our lines expense lines. Now, there's it's not it, it is not, um, doesn't make sense to take a total of averages. That doesn't make sense. Um, so we just leave that cell below it. The cell G8, we um, will not put anything in there because it doesn't make sense. So uh, this, is the, uh, this is the end of this video. So just in summary, we saw 
entering formulas. Uh, we, we saw defining the ranges. We saw again, copying formulas, which is exactly the same as copying text or copying numbers. Uh, and we saw how that, that all takes place. One last thing we'll wanna do is just for completeness, I think these should be old. And now we have a finished product. This is our winter term uh, uh, budget using Excel. And that's the end of this video.